In this video, we'll solve problem 1.20 of the textbook Mechanical Vibrations from Rao, 6th edition. This is part of chapter 1. My name is Carmen Mueller Carrier. Here we have a uniform bar of mass M that is pivoted at the point O and is connected to two springs, spring of constant K1 and spring of constant K2. We consider a small angular displacement of the rigid bar and we will determine the equivalent constant of the spring with a restoring moment. The first thing that we will do is draw our free body diagram. At A, we have a pin. A pin produces two reactions. We have the weight of the bar that is located at the center of mass. The weight is mass times gravity. And then we have the forces of the spring. The spring of K2 is being compressed. Therefore, we have a force in this direction. And then here, the spring 1 is being extended. Therefore, we have a force in this direction. We have that this vertical distance is L4 cosine of theta. This vertical distance is L cosine of theta. And then we have this, we need this distance, and this distance is L half sine of theta. And this vertical distance is L half cosine of theta. The force of the spring 1 is equal to the K1 and the stretch of the spring 1. The stretch is this distance over here, and that stretch is equal to L4 sine of theta. Force of the spring 2 is K2, and the stretch of the spring 2. The stretch is this distance over here, which will be L sine of theta. So for small rotational displacements, we have that the sine of theta can be approximated to theta, and the cosine of theta will be approximated to 1. So here we will be able to say that the force of the spring 1 is K1 L4 theta and the force of the spring 2 will be equal to K2 L theta. Now we do the equations of motion and we will take moments at point O. Why do we take moment at point O? Because we are not interested in finding those reactions of the pin. So we know that the forces created by all the external forces will be equal to the kinetic forces. So the moment created by all these external forces is equal to the kinetic moment. So we have the force of the spring 1 times the distance, which is L4 cosine of theta, will create a positive moment plus the positive moment that creates the spring 2, which is L cosine of theta, minus the moment created by the weight, which is L half sine of theta mg, all that will be equal to negative mass moment of inertia of the bar respect to O, theta two dots. The mass moment of inertia of a bar in 1n is one third mass length squared. So we can write this as one third mass L squared theta two dots plus. Remember that the cosine of theta will become one and I will substitute the force of the spring one and the force of the spring two. Therefore, I have K one L four squared theta plus K two L squared theta Remember that this becomes 1, this becomes 1, and this becomes theta. Therefore, I have negative L half mg theta. That's equals to 0. I can put together everything that 
multiplies theta that's equals to zero. This over here represents the equivalent mass and this over here represents the equivalent constant of the spring. Therefore, the equivalent constant of the spring is this expression right here. K1 L squared divided by 16 plus K2 L squared minus L half mg. It's important to notice that we have a negative sign here in the constant of the spring. If the effect of the weight is bigger and overcomes the forces of the spring, that bar will not be stable and will not vibrate around the equilibrium position that in this case is the vertical position. So we cannot have a very big weight because the system becomes unstable. This is what is called an inverted pendulum. If we want to calculate the natural frequency of the system, the natural frequency is defined as the square root of the equivalent constant of the spring divided by the equivalent mass. Therefore, since we already calculated those two parameters, we can say that the natural frequency is equals to the constant of the spring that we just calculated divided by the equivalent mass, which is one third mass L squared. We can solve this problem also with an energy approach. We know that when we have a system that does not have damping, we have conservation of energy. So we can say that the kinetic energy plus the potential energy is constant through all time. Therefore, if we derive this expression respect to time, we get that this is equals to zero. So let's find the kinetic energy and the potential energy for this system. The kinetic energy, since we are rotating respect to point O, would just be one half the mass moment of inertia respect to O times the angular velocity squared. Then we have the potential energy, and the potential energy will be the elements that accumulate potential energy are the spring one, the spring two, and the weight. The potential energy for spring one will be equals to one half the constant of the spring times the stretch square. That will be K1, and we already know, and we calculated that, that the stretch of the spring is L4 sine of theta squared. And the potential energy for the second spring will be one half K2 S2. Therefore, that will be one half K2, and the stretch of the second spring will be L sine of theta. And finally, we have the potential energy of the weight. So we have the initial position over here. So the weight is located at L half. And then when we rotate, the weight is located over here. So it goes down. And this distance over here is L half cosine of theta. Therefore, the distance that I went down is this distance over here. So this will be H. And I'm going down, therefore it's negative mgh, and this is negative mg l half minus l half cosine of theta. Now we are going to derive, respect to time, the expression for the total energy. Now I will do the derivative respect to time of the total energy. I will do the derivative first of the kinetic energy, that's 2 over 2, the mass moment of inertia, theta dot, and I have to derive theta dot respect to time, which gives me the acceleration, the angular acceleration. This is the derivative of the kinetic energy, and now I do the derivative of the potential energy. 
The first term gives me 2 over 2, k1, l over 4 squared, sine of theta. The derivative of sine is cosine, and I have to derive respect to time the variable theta. Therefore, I will get theta dot. The second term will be 2 over 2, k2, l squared, sine of theta, again, cosine of theta, theta dot. And finally, I have the derivative of the potential energy of the weight, which gives me negative mg. The first term, which is L half, will be zero. And then the derivative of cosine is negative sine, with that negative become positive, and I have sine of theta. And again, I have to derive respect to time, therefore I have theta that. That equals to zero. As you see, every term is multiplied by theta dot, so I will take it as a common factor, and I will have that everything is multiplied, and I will also take those two, three terms out, and then I have the mass moment of inertia, theta two dots, plus k1, l squared over 16, and remember that we are working for small rotations, therefore sine of theta becomes theta, and cosine of theta becomes one. So I can write over here theta. Then the second term becomes A2L squared theta. And the last term becomes mg theta. All that is multiplied by theta dot equals to C. Since we do not want the, a trivial solution, this cannot be this has to be different to zero, therefore the what is in brackets has to be equal to zero. So we get exactly the same equation of motion. My mass moment of inertia is m one third m l squared. So I can write here one third m l squared theta two dot plus k one l squared over sixteen plus k two l squared minus m g oh I forgot to put l half and I'm going to put it right here. Sorry about that. So this all multiplies theta equals to zero. So here we have again the same value for our constant of the spring and here we have our equivalent mass. And as you see we got exactly the same value as doing it using the Newton's approach. Here we have the whole solution. We got the equation of motion using Newton's approach. We took moment respect to point O, and this is the value we get for our equivalent constant of the spring. And then we use the energy approach, and we got the same value for the constant of the spring.